Today we hear the Annunciation of the Shepherds. And in all three Annunciations, whether it is the Annunciation to Mary, the Annunciation to Joseph, or the Annunciation to the Shepherds, when the angel appears, the first words spoken are, Do not be afraid. And with that, there is that constant invitation because the human heart at times because of original sin is fearful of God and is hesitant to encounter God. It is like Adam and Eve when they, after committing their sin, hide in the garden because they are fearful. They are fearful of what God is going to do or what may happen to them. And their focus is on themselves. But the angel, in all three proclamations, assures them that good news is going to be proclaimed. I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And so there is the pointing to of the fulfillment of the Messiah and the promise. And we heard that in the reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, in which Isaiah speaks that a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall be upon him a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not the kind of fear that terrifies one, but that fear, that recognition, that wonder, that awe in the greatness and the goodness of God. And all of you should know that the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit were just mentioned in there, that those gifts of the Holy Spirit are the Spirit of the Lord resting upon not only our Lord, but also upon us. And in that, we see the scene that is given and the promise that the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations. The Gentiles shall seek it out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. And in that, that the message of Jesus, the message of the Messiah, is a universal message. It is a message for all human <coughs> beings, whether they are Jew, whether they are pagan, whether they are Gentile. And as we reflect upon that and see in St. Paul's letter, St. Paul points to the truth that the Lord and the mystery of salvation <coughs> And the wisdom of God is, in the minds of humanity, something that is foolish and something that at times just does not make sense. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. <coughs> he then goes on to reflect on how the Lord has chosen people that we would not even think of them being chosen. And we can see that consistently throughout the Old Testament. And in terms of those that the Lord chooses, he does not choose the great, he does not choose the mighty, he does not choose the powerful. But who does he choose? First he chooses Mary, who is a very simple young girl more than likely uneducated, certainly educated in the ways of God, but uneducated in the ways of the world. And he chooses Joseph. He chooses the shepherds to be the ones who go out and proclaim the good news. And then he chooses to be born in a cave like this. where there's animals around, where there's dirt around. I mean, any woman today 
would be terrified to deliver her child in a place like this. And this is nice because it's got lighting, it's got, it's cleaned up some and all. But imagine what it was like in the time of Jesus. And so St. Paul reflects upon that in his heart. And he speaks that God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly and despised of the world and those who count for nothing to reduce to nothing those who are something so that a human being, no human being, might boast before God. And then he goes on to proclaim the great truth for each and every one of us. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom of God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And so the one that we truly boast in is in the Lord, and that we are called to boast in. How do these readings then speak to us today in our own hearts? First of all, they call us to see the radical love of God for humanity and his love for those who are lowly, who are weak, who are those who are totally rejected by society. He calls us to see that all of us depend on the Lord for everything. <clears throat> that all that we have is pure gift and that it comes from God himself. Oftentimes, I think back to Muhammad Ali, the boxer, and how he would run around after a boxing match and saying, I am the greatest, I am the greatest, I am the greatest. And who was he trying to prove that to? No one other than himself. <coughs> because he did not have the humility to see that the gifts that he had received really came from God. He boasted about himself and not about Christ. And we have to search our own hearts as to what keeps us from boasting in Christ, from being those who proclaim Christ to others, and to grow in that grace of humility, and to pray for that grace of humility, that our eyes may be open to recognize the goodness that God has bestowed upon us, and that unique plan that God has for each and every one of us, that only you can fulfill. No other human being can fulfill that. Only you. That is God's love for you. Secondly, these readings also call us to hear the words, do not be afraid. Because look at how many times, out of fear, we do not do something. All of us have experienced that where there has been some fear in our heart that it hesitates us to do the good. And look at how often St. John Paul II would call the entire church with those words, be not afraid. Be not afraid. And so the Lord and the angel today in this place speaks those same words to you. <coughs> be not afraid. Whatever those fears may be in your own heart. And those anxieties. And I do not know what those fears are in your hearts. I do not know what the wounds are in your hearts. I do not know what the sins are in your hearts. But I do know for sure that the Lord wants you to hear those words. Be not afraid. And that he wants to heal you. That is his deepest desire. That his glory shine in your heart as it shine in the hearts of Mary, of Joseph, of the shepherds. Finally, we see that the shepherds 
Go in haste and find Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. And they make known the message that had come to them about the child. And it is important, my sisters and brothers, to see how often Luke uses that word, go in haste. If you remember, Mary went in haste. And the shepherds go in haste. And even Joseph, when in the flight into Egypt, he goes immediately. And so there's that automatic response that they give. And so too are we called to be those who not only go in haste, but also proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. That as Catholics, we are called to be evangelists, to be those who invite others to encounter Jesus Christ and to come to know Christ. We should never, ever be embarrassed about our faith. And our homes should truly be sanctuaries and places in which people automatically know when they enter your house that you're Catholic. Just as when a person enters a faithful Jewish home and sees the book of the Torah on the door as they are entering into it, or some quote from scripture as they are entering into it, it gives them the reminder this is a Jewish home, and it is a place where God is honored. And it always amazes me how many Catholics today remove all religious symbols from their home, or have no religious symbols in their home. And it's a huge contrast, certainly from the way that I grew up. There was no doubt when you came into our home that our home was Catholic. Whether it was the Last Supper on the wall in the dining room, whether it was the statue of the Sacred Heart in the living room, whether it was the crucifix on the wall of every bedroom, and the image of Mary and Joseph, all of those were symbols and signs that God came first in our house. We did not have posters of young women over our beds, or young men, or the latest stars. None of that. And how much of that is there today? And so, we are called to be those who evangelize. We are called to be those who proclaim the good news. And the shepherds return to this place, glorifying and praising God. And when you return home, will you be glorifying and praising God because of your experience here and because of who you have encountered here? And so as we continue with our celebration of the Eucharist today, let us reflect upon these readings that have been given to us by the church and where they speak to our own hearts and what the Lord is speaking to your heart in particular. What is the fear or the wound or the sin that he is maybe calling you away from and desiring to heal within you? To hear the words, be not afraid. Or where is he calling you to recognize and to grow in the virtue of humility? To recognize that all is gift from him and praying for that virtue of humility. It is the first of all virtues. Or, where is he calling you to be an evangelist? To be those who go out into the world proclaiming the good news. <laughs>